most powerful invasion air force ever launched. Some of the 11,000 planes that opened the path through the so-called impregnable Atlantic Wall. Between Laube and Cherbourg in Normandy, the Allied lightning strikes. Communications necessary to the German defenses are blasted. Now, back in England, a 50-mile-long air train gets underway. Yank paratroopers receive last-minute instructions before taking off for the invasion coast 100 miles across the English Channel. These are the heroes who established first contact with the enemy. As the transports take off, General Brereton wishes them Godspeed. Another set of brave men board gliders. Zebra stripings mark all Allied aircraft as invasion equipment. And at another English field, one of the many from which the terrific Allied power set out, British troops are glider borne to the flaming coast of France. Backing up the mightiest invasion by air, 4,000 ships, combat and landing craft carry the war to the enemy by sea. The Coast Guard, the Navy, the Air Forces land hundreds of thousands of British, Canadians and Yanks on Hitler's doorstep within a few days. Isolating Cherbourg with its strategic harbor is the immediate objective. Landings are made under a naval barrage. President Roosevelt said, let our hearts be stout, and later Germany is the first on the list for destruction. These troops bucking the choppy seas in the channel heeded his words. While landings were successful, we were not without our losses. Shock troops move in for the beach assault. The most gigantic armada in history. Each hour and the enemy's hedgehog defenses are ahead. This is the supreme moment of invasion. This is frontal assault on an entrenched enemy. Heroic medical corpsmen remove wounded for return to England. Some landing craft are stranded on sandbars, and a tank founders. The first batch of Nazi prisoners, the supermen who believed their west wall impregnable, and a Frenchman to whom the stars and stripes spell liberty. He's waited a long time for this. What he says wouldn't pass the censor. Nazi wounded get the same care as Allied soldiers.
During the landings, the merciless pounding of the entire invasion area continues. Here is real pinpoint bombing. One of the last bridges between the invasion coast and Paris gets it. When the beachhead is established, heavier equipment is moved in. Reinforcements for those heroes who are bringing liberation to the people of Europe. The cost of our initial landing was but a fraction of what our leaders expected. More than 10,000 German prisoners were captured in the first few days of the battle. And we know one Hun who's not going to peddle any more Nazi philosophy. The Allied advance is rapid as we mop up town after town. Those not seriously wounded are questioned on the spot by their captors. The Allies bagged plenty of equipment from the surprised Germans. Many of the enemy troops didn't know what hit them, and the cooperation of the French aided our cause. Some Yank will have a nice doormat when he gets back home. The Supreme Commander, General Eisenhower, holds an early conference with General Montgomery, the commander of English ground troops and they see that all operations go according to plan. These are the men who will lead us to victory, along with General Omar Bradley with glasses, who commands our infantry. The cost of our first landing was low, but many wounded are returned to English ports, men injured in that first assault. Let these pictures remind us that there's still a long road ahead to Berlin. The bond you buy in this fifth war loan drive can help men like these on the path to victory. Now it's your turn. Buy that extra bond today.